वेलकम टू एक्सैडमी हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू एक्सैडमी माय नेम इज प्रभाष कुमार एंड आई एम टीचिंग यू इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैड ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड इन द लेसन 1 दैट इज योर पावर्स एंड रूल्स सो दिस इज लेसन नंबर 2 इन व्हिच वी विल बी सीइंग लोगारिथम्स so this is the order of the lectures that will be getting uploaded so we have already completed powers and rules now we are into logarithms so let's start this logarithms so let's see what is this logarithms so defining this properly so we can say this as it is an inverse function of exponentiation okay so there is an exponentiation function so it's simply the inverse of that exponentiation so let us consider y equals to a to the power of x okay now if you take logarithm on both the sides so this could be written as log y equals to log a to the power of x can you see this on the left hand side it's y so y is written here a to the power of x is written so a to the power of x so simply i have taken log on both the sides so here i have taken log 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 here also i have taken log log okay now this implies log y equals to now this is the rule that whatever is there in the power so that gets multiplied with that okay so here if it is x so this x will be getting multiplied on the left hand side fine so this could be written as log y equals to x log x okay now log y and here it's log a so bring this log a down so here you can write again log y equals to log a okay which is equal to x so here you can write this as x equals to log y to the base a now see initially it was y equals to a to the power of x so this has been converted into x equals to log y to the base a okay now what is the rule to remember so whenever you find anything written like this simply you just take this as the base and on that power x is being uh, headed on the power so this could be written as y equals to a to the power of x okay so y equals to a to the power of x could be written as x equals to log y to the base a okay so here this a is called as the base fine so log is always associated with a base log is always associated with a base you cannot define any logarithm without a base a base it has to be there it's a must thing to happen okay so a logarithm always associated with a base so what is the basic definition for this so y equals to log x to the base a so this is only possible if a to the power of y equals to x now see this is a mathematical language don't think that i have done a spelling mistake out here so this is not a spelling mistake it is a mathematical language of writing if and only if okay so i double f means if and only if so if and only if a to the power of y equals to x then only you can write this as y equals to log x to the base a fine provided your a and x has to be zero your a and x has to be zero and a is not equal to 1 so this base a should not be equal to 1 why because we know that log 1 is zero okay log 1 is zero now here you will ask me sir here you have not given any base then dear student remember that if nothing is mentioned then by default the base is considered as to be 10 then by default the base is considered as 10 okay so here i am writing log 1 is equal to 0 so if log 1 could also be written as log 1 to the base 10 to the equals to 0 equals to 10 to the power of 0 equals to 1 okay so here you can write log 1 equals to 0 now we know that log x by log a so in the denominator if log 1 comes so in the denominator if 0 comes so that makes the thing indeterminate so that is why a or the base a should not be equal to 1 is this clear to you once again let's have a quick recap logarithm is is an inverse function to exponentiation i can write y equals to a to the power of x as x equals to log y to the base a and it is always associated with a base so this is the basic definition provided log 1 is equal to 0 so this 1 cannot be considered as the base 1 is never taken as a base c the summary so log x to the base y equals to y okay so what is the rule so whatever is written here so b you can take this b here and in the power you bring y 
so that will be taken as x okay so this is the rule of converting or removing the log if you want to remove the log from this expression you can write this manner okay so x is equal to b to the power of y x equals to b to the power of y or x equals to b raised to the power of y let's see an example so if something is written like this log 64 to the base 2 equals to so we need to calculate this value fine so let us assume that log 64 to the base 2 equals to m so from here you can write 2 to the power m equals to 64 2 to the power of m equals to 2 to the power of 6 why because 64 can be written in the power of 2 why i am doing this because in the previous class we had learned powers and rules remember so in that uh, we just saw that whenever the base is same the powers has to be same okay when the whenever the base is same for this expression to be equal the powers has to be same so 2 to the power of m if this has to be equal to 2 to the power of 6 then definitely this m value has to be 6 okay so from we we can write here m equals to 6 so finally we got an answer for this that is log 64 to the base 2 could be written as 6 fine there is a note if the base is invisible then by default the base is taken as 10 just now I had told you if base is invisible then by default the base is taken as 10 now you will be having one question sir what if if I keep changing the base can I have any other base other than 10 then your answer is here so we have different types of logarithms let's have a look on this we have different types of logarithms so I have written this nicely so this is the types of logarithm the base what is the ISO notation? Do you know what is ISO? Just Google it out. It is, it is International Organization for Standardization. Okay. So ISO has given some standard notations that we need to follow. And what are the applications? So till now when we were studying mathematics, we, we were simply calculating and solving the problems. But where is it uh, to actually applied? What is this application part? How is it being applied? What are the areas? What are the fields in which this logarithm is being applied? So I have written all these things such that you should have a, a fair idea that what is the purpose of studying logarithms. All right. So first type of binary logarithm, first type of logarithm is binary logarithm. What is binary? By means two. Okay. So binary logarithm, a logarithm in which the base is two. If your base is two, so that is considered as binary logarithm. So what is the ISO notation given? It is LBX. Remember, it is LBX, LBX or you can write this as log X to the base 2. So log X to the base 2 in short is written as LBX. Till now we were just familiar with ln X or log X, but this is a new term for you. So please remember this is very interesting. You can write here LBX. Okay, so LBX means log X to the base 2. Where is it being applied? It is being applied in computer science, information theory, music theory, photography. Yes, photography, music theory, in so many wide applications it has got. So basically these are things that are being applied in using the softwares, in the inside the softwares. Okay. So first type of a logarithm is binary logarithm. Clear? Come to second type of logarithm. Second type of logarithm we have is natural logarithm. Second type of logarithm is natural logarithm. Here the base is E. What is this E? So we will see. This is not a, uh, this is an alphabetical letter, but it symbolizes a constant that we will see sometime later. So this is a constant. Okay. So this is not a variable. So this is a constant. So whenever the base is E, so that ISO notation is ln x. ln x means log x to the base E. Simple. So log x to the base E. Whenever the base is considered as E, so in short, you can write like this as ln x. Okay. So what is the application for this? Maths, physics, chemistry, statistics, etc. It, it also has got wide range of applications. Natural logarithm. You might be solving some numericals or problems in your engineering. So you might be familiar with this term, right? So, so many times this has come into picture while solving the problems. The third one, the most common one, common logarithm. If the base is considered as 10, okay? So that is called as the common logarithm. So ISO notation. So you can write this as log x to the base 10 or this in short can be written as LGX. Remember, so initially 
uh, while we were pursuing our courses or uh, undergraduate courses so the most familiar terms that we were using was lnx and logx okay so this lbx term is a new term lgx is term lgx is also a new term so these are varieties of writing expression with different ways of expressing the things you can use whichever you want so it has got a wide range of applications in various engineering fields spectroscopy and so forth okay now one more thing, uh, so here I have shown only base 2, base e and base 10 but this does not mean that the logarithm cannot have a base other than all these three. You can take any base but the base should not be 1, remember that, that's it. Let's have an interesting note, see two types of uh, e I am seeing here, two ways of writing e. So this is E, you take out your calculator, whichever scientific calculator you have, in that you might be having these two letters, one thing written in italics and one thing written like this, okay. So this is simply an alphabetical letter and it is a variable and this whatever is written in italics, so this is called a Napier's constant. It is named after the father of logarithm, Mr. John Napier. So Mr. John Napier was a mathematician, he was a professor. So after just after his name, just in order to honor him, this constant is named after him. So which is called Napier's constant. Fine. So just see the year in which he discovered this. He just gave this term. He gave this term in 1614. Long, long years ago, isn't it? So long years ago, this concept has been coming and we have been using uh, currently. Okay. So what is this Napier's constant? So this is the definition for this Napier's constant. So this Napier's constant is defined as the limiting value of 1 plus 1 by x whole raised to the power of x as x tends to infinity. Okay. So this is the uh, definition for this Napier's constant. And what is the value for this? When you will press in calculator, so you will get 2.718281828468 and so on. So it will go on forever, forever. So it is a recurring, okay, non-repeating but recurring. It is continuous. It can never stop. It, it is going continuously, okay. So but for our approximation, we take it as 0 0.271 or 2, 2 sorry, 2.718 for our calculations. Got the idea? What is this Napier's constant? Okay. Now finally, the question comes, sir, how to use this logarithms in mathematics? for solving problems definitely we will be using this logarithms for solving the problems so what there are some properties and results that you should learn these properties by heart okay so let's see what is the first property first property is log 1 to the base a is 0 log 1 okay so log 1 whichever base you take that will be 0 okay no problem so log 1 to the base a is always 0 then log a to the base a is 1 log a to the base a is 1. Why, why is it log a to the base a is 1? Because log a to the base a, you, you can write this as log a upon log a. So log a log a gets cancelled and this could be written as 1. The third property that we are seeing here, this third property log mn to the base a. So whenever you find any uh, product of two variables, so log gets separated and gets added. So log m to the base a plus log n to the base a, okay. So whenever there is any product of two variables, the log gets added. Similarly, whenever there is a division of two variables, the log gets separated and base remains same. So this gets distributed here. So log m to the base a minus log n to the base a, clear? All these four properties moving to number 5. So whenever you see that we have log m to the power n and base a, so as we can see that whatever is written in power that will come on the left hand side. This will come on the left hand side of it. So this could be written as n log m to the base a. So fifth property is also clear. Coming to sixth property. So log a to the base b. So this could be written as 1 upon log b to the base a. This could be written as 1 upon log b to the base a. So it becomes reciprocal. Uh, reciprocal. Whenever you are interchanging the base and the uh, the base and with this variable, so it gets uh, that reciprocal, it gets converted into a reciprocal, okay. So log m to the base a to the power 1 by k, okay. Now this could be written as 1 by k log m to the base a. This you can do it from all the properties. Now x equals to e to the power of ln x, okay. Now e to the power of ln x. So if you take the log on both the sides, I am taking natural logarithm on both the sides. So here if I write ln x, 
this will be ln e to the power of ln x and this ln x will come on the left hand side and ln e is 1. So this will get converted to ln e to the power of x. Fine. Coming to ninth property we have log m to the base a equals to log m to the base b into log b to the base a. So we can write this format simply. That, that It simply means that uh, you can write this as log m to the base a multiplied with log b to the base a. So log b log b gets cancelled and it again finally becomes log m to the base a provided your b value is greater than 0 and b is not equal to 1. Okay. Coming to number 10 we have x equals to x to the power of log y to the base a equals to y to the power of log x to the base a. Simply you can interchange like this. Number 11th property we have x equals to x to the power of log a to the base a equals to a to the power of log x to the base a. Simply you can derive all these expressions from the previous properties but I will recommend you, I will suggest you to kindly learn all these properties by heart because in the examination you don't have that much of time to derive the things, right? So remember all these properties by heart. Now last property that we have is log m to the base a equals to log m to the base b divided by log a to the base b, okay? So, with this we have completed our second topic that is logarithms. So, in the third topic we will be seeing something else. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.